they wanted a definition of exigent circumstance. Did you post that? Yeah, that, that was me. I okay. just, um, it was, yeah. <laughs> so let's, 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 I didn't know what it meant, but I thought, yeah. <laughs> right, it's a fancy word. I didn't know what it meant until law school. Um, You know, during the break, I noticed uh, there was a private message from one of you guys to me about a comment, I guess, posted on one of the Facebook uh, sites. Uh, they wanted a definition of exigent circumstance. Did, did you post that? Yeah, that, that was me. I okay. just, um, it was, yeah. <laughs> so let, let, let I didn't know what it meant, but I thought, yeah. <laughs> Right, it's a fancy word. I didn't know what it meant until law school. Um, exigent circumstance <laughs> means emergency, that it's an emergency circumstance. And so when a judge, when a social worker comes out to your home, they can take your kid, right? They can detain your child. They're only, no, Amanda, this is, this is for you. They, they can take your child. They're only supposed to do it if they have a court order a warrant or an exigent circumstance, meaning an emergency. Okay. Now, if they don't have a court order or a warrant, and then they really don't have an exigent circumstance, you can't do anything about it in the juvenile dependency court, in the CPS court. You have to go and sue them in another court and try to get money. But that doesn't help you at the time of your CPS case. They just, you know, took your kid and basically you, you, there's nothing you can do about it in that case. You can get justice later. Hey, let's take another call right now. We have uh, Christopher from California from the LBC. Christopher, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? It is actually both. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Perfect. So, yeah, this case is um, basically I've been reporting since. 2019 to social services. My child has been exposed to drugs. Uh, she has had many um, medical issues because of this uh, behavior of the mother. Uh, she has been in the emergency room plenty of times, I believe 20. Um, it had, we're talking about a two-year-old. Um, the mother... Um, she, um, she has posted in the past suicidal um, suicidal posts on, on, on social media saying that she would commit suicide. Uh, I left the mother because of the drug use, the violence, and um, the threats that she was making. And um, I did advise uh, this. They uh, disregarded my concerns. Uh, didn't do anything. Basically, from every fact and evidence that I have presented, they came with an objection. And um, uh, right now in 2021, on May, they opened a um, detention hearing case. And this was based on um, neglect and failure to protect. Um, I was appointed an attorney who is not helpful. And um, um, I mean, they put me in a situation where social services is, is lightly turning against me, putting a criminal record that is not mine on my file. And this uh, detention report that they submitted to the court, they uh, found a person with a similar name than mine, and they just placed the record there. This person has like few felonies and like seven misdemeanors uh, with active bench warranties and um, Ah, man, it, it, it is uh, an extensive case. I got the only help that I got from the attorney is this um, discovery thing that she filed. I requested CPS records from 2019 till today, and they gave me 700 pages, double sided 
with uh, CPS reports. It goes from fingers burned to cuts to broken arms to a lot of things. And um, I mean, I, I, I'm confused on how I can help my child. You know, I've been reporting to these uh, agencies, to the police department, and they have not protected my child. They keep allowing my child to stay with her mother. And my child now, she, she's talking now and she's making statements and I'm reporting these statements that she's making. But then they don't, they claim that because of the child's age, the statement that she's making is not valid. Well, Christopher, I mean, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you have an open CPS case? Yes, uh, we have a detention case, yeah, CPS case, you know. So you, you have a detention hearing coming up? Uh, I already went through the detention hearing. Uh-huh. And then, um, yeah, I, I already finished that one. But we have another hearing. When, what is uh, the next three? hearing that's coming up? On September 16th. But what is it? Is it the jurisdictional disposition hearing? Is it a six month yes. review? Is it a twelve month review? It's, it's jurisdictional. Yes, it's a jurisdictional. Okay. So are the allegations in the case against you or the mother or both of you? It's against both, even though I presented the facts, I presented the police reports mm -hmm. on the dates that I have the visits. I pick up my daughter from a from my location. Okay. And then from okay. that location I drop her off. And I report the, these injuries that she comes with uh, to the police department, and okay. then she gets investigated. Christopher, yes. this is what you're going to need to do. For your jurisdictional dispositional hearing, you're going to have to sit down with your attorney on the phone or in person or on Zoom and come up with a strategy. All right. And if your attorney you know, won't work with you, um, you might consider getting another attorney. Um, you can make a, a what's called a Marsden hearing if you're in California, and I see that you are. You can make a Marsden uh, hearing to uh, ask for a Marsden hearing to ask for a new court-appointed attorney. And you always have the alternative to go out and hire your own attorney, a uh, private attorney, to try to work with you. Okay? But yeah. if, you, if you have this evidence, the only way to make sure that it's going to get before the judge is through your attorney either your court-appointed attorney or your private attorney. And that's why what I would suggest is you sit down on the phone or in person with your court-appointed attorney and try to come up with a plan, you know, a strategy that you're satisfied with that might work in your favor. Two minutes. Correct. But what do I do if this attorney is, like, not, in, not answering the emails, not answering the text messages? Christopher, I told you. I, I already told you that. You get a new attorney by making a Marsden hearing, and you can look up a YouTube channel, and I, I have a couple of videos about how do you do a Marsden hearing, or you can hire your own private attorney. Now, those are the only I two see, things you can do. I've seen those videos, yes. Uh, I, I really like them. I, I got the information from there, and it was really helpful. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how these, um, how can I protect myself from social services, you know, when they come at me with you can record. Uh, you can record me because of my policy. But then they be when they when they perform an investigation, I disclose information with them, and then they disclose this information with the other party, and the other party is texting me. You told this to the social worker, and this and that. Well, and uh, well, what I would do is to make sure that it's recorded. I would send it via email to the social worker and to your attorney. But of course, this is something, Christopher, you should be discussing with your attorney, not just going on off on your own, trying to do things that you think are going to help you. One minute. Do you, get, do you, you get what I'm saying, Christopher? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Christopher, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Call us back in about three or four weeks and give us an update on uh, what's been going on in your case. And, of course, keep listening to us every Saturday. All right, we're going to have to take our next break during the second hour. This is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services, and when we'll be back after these messages.